Now, since we last spoke to you, Donald Trump <laughs> is a convicted felon it, and he's out on bail. It, has anything happened since last time we uh, talked? Not yes, much. Um, Just a few been... unprecedented moments in your country. But look, uh, more seriously, we've seen his response uh, since. He says he's not afraid of going to jail, but it is stirred up again, um, I think, a really quite uh, scary sentiment ahead of the presidential election. And looking at where this is all headed, if he wins, there will be unrest. If he loses, it might be even worse. What do you think? Yeah. I'm not as worried as many uh, claim to be about unrest, and here's why. You know, so often in politics we talk about the importance of watching what people do as opposed to listening to what they say. And mm. there's a large portion of the country, myself included, who were very, very disappointed, even angry about the decision uh, to find the president guilty last week. But how do those people respond? They did not take to the streets. They didn't set things on fire. They didn't riot. LJ, what they did is they went online and started giving the president, former President Trump, a lot of money. And I mean a ton of money. He's raised over $50 million in a couple of days since the conviction came down. The average donation is $70. And critically, critically, the early uh, data that's being put out by the Republican National Committee is that 25% of those donors in the last couple of days are new donors to Donald Trump, people who have never given to him before. In my line of work, in politics in the United States of America, that is an unbelievably high percentage. Typically, yes, you can get money yeah. from people. If they gave you $25, maybe they'll give you $10 again. But to get a new donor is a really, really big deal. Trump has had just a phenomenal political success over the course of the last 72 hours. Yeah, he has. Um, and this is kind of back to my uh, original point. If he was able to argue that the last election was stolen and many of his hardcore supporters believe that, I mean, what would happen this time if he won the popular vote but didn't win the election, which we know that's how your yeah. system works? Yeah, I don't think there's any chance he wins a popular vote. Keep in mind, the way that that works is California is so large and so democratic, and New York is yeah. so large and so democratic. Illinois is the same, that a lot of those really big states uh, will be heavily, heavily democratic. I think he lost uh, California by 40 points. So that's we don't pay attention mm -hmm much here to the to the to the to the national vote. So that's not the concern. The concern is is whether or not the election is run fairly. And I think both sides right now are focusing on making sure that happens. But certainly, certainly if you if you believe if you wanted to find evidence that this was a, a political witch hunt, you can find it. If you want to find evidence that the, the judge was biased against Donald Trump, you can find it. Certainly those conversations are going on right now. But I think critically this is fascinating to those of us in Washington, D.C., who watch this for a living. Um, there has been no unrest. There have been a couple of, you know, the occasional yeah. uh, anonymous sort of threats online. But mostly people are, are conducting themselves within the, the, the boundaries right now, which is to get politically active. And that could be very powerful come November. Yeah, that's a really good point, Mick, uh, that we haven't seen that unrest. And I'm sure there were those in authority that might have been bracing for all of that before. Before we let you go, and there's uh, many conversations you and I are going to have between now and November, but Hunter Biden, uh, he's on trial as well. Um, the fir another, another first in American politics, the first son of a sitting US president to, to, to be on trial. What's the significance yeah, the of this, do you think? Yeah. The, the juxtaposition of this has just been fascinating. To have the first, you know, conviction of a former president last week and now the first trial of a child of a president um, this week. Keep in mind, the allegations here are, are heavily tied to Hunter Biden's drug addiction, which he has admitted. He's charged with, with falsifying some records for the purchase of a handgun several years ago. Um, just as the Democrats are trying really, really hard not to celebrate Donald Trump's conviction last week, I've talked to a lot of Republicans. In fact, I'm here tonight at a Republican club, and the conversation is, should we celebrate if, if Hunter Biden is, is convicted? And the answer there seems to be a, a resounding no. Uh, lots of folks, even if you don't like Hunter Biden, if you don't like his dad's politics, you don't like Democrats, um, this is the story of a sad story of addiction. Um, and I don't think there's, the smart people are not trying to make political hay out of it. But in this country, um, there will be some folks who will. So it will be uh, when you and I talk next, uh, next Tuesday morning, there may be some <laughs> stories about a Republican celebrating a Hunter Biden conviction. Yeah, let us know. I thought it was a really uh, clever uh, but also heartfelt statement uh, from Joe Biden yeah. trying to counter any of those arguments that might come up over the next couple of weeks. Mick, great to see you. Great to have you back. We'll see you soon. Thanks, LJ.